This is the world famous Gropius architecture building. It's the Bauhaus archive, the museum, design museum. And this is the garden here. Actually, it's a space which is not in use. When we talked to the Bauhaus Museum, we asked them what would happen if we activate the potential of a space which is still asleep. And they said, well, how, how would you like to do it? Because everything is here under preservation. You know, we're not allowed to build anything here because we need permission. And I said, well, let's do it with tiny houses because with tiny houses, they're all on wheels. We don't need permission. So that's a kind of like trick. And this is what, uh, what we're doing now. We, uh, we have created a, an utopian village. And it starts with doing it yourself. Now you see a grain silo. This is really its original shape. And I decided to, to turn it into architecture. This is definitely an odd shape for a habitable space, right? Like I agree with you, but you have to try, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because the shape is there. It was, was rather uninhabitable when we discovered it first, you know? Imagine this space without any place where you can even put your foot and stand on. And we said, oh, what about sitting? And then we discovered that two people can sit next to each other. And everywhere, which is a table, oh, it's an armrest, oh my god, they can sit somebody there, and suddenly it all found its place. This is the house to be nice to each other, and sit down and look into each other's eyes and have a conversation, to contemplate, to talk. There will be a platform where you can have a bed and sleep in, but the main thing is to bring people together. And you can have a tea, you can do many other things, I mean, I love this place too, where you can, basically, you can stretch out. Now we're making tea, so it's a little bit, no, it's enough space, so you can... I mean, this is again how you build for yourself, you know, I can fit in here, not everyone can. Wave to all the cute people who come and have a look at us. You know what's a scary thing? What? This. Basically, in the old days, you could just open it up and let the grain out. Oh yeah, what look, is that? Is that plastic? Well, yeah. So you just jump and you can stand on it. So you see, you can go higher, but this is not the end. That's great. Hey, world. There were a lot of people who have uh, utopian ideas and they wrote books. And what we do is we don't, we're not good in writing books. We're good in, you know, building tiny houses. So what you see here is uh, not a book, but a village, an utopian village, where we tried to design a new kind of neighborhood. The Tito House is the, the abbreviation for tiny townhouse. The concept of this tiny house is that you can put it like tiny houses in a row, like a lot of tiny houses just next to each other. And uh, there are only openings like in front and in the back. So this is a really interesting space. I mean, if you look inside, you will see just, uh, you know, nothing, <laughs> like a void space. That's why uh, this house is called a void tiny house. Housing is a very individual thing, and we should not just leave it into the hands of the city planners, the architects and politicians. If you want to eat, you can open the table. We should take back the, the rights to design how we want to live, how we want to cook, and how we want to eat. Here's the very big kitchen for such a small house. Over here, to create more storage place for your Pantry. cereals and everything. Okay. You can open both windows here, cook here, mm -hmm. so people can sit outside, inside. In the back, we have a lot of storage place. And the idea is to have a place where people can bring their food. People like rescuing the food from the supermarket, which would otherwise thrown away. We have more vegetables and some herbs and everything. Even if you have a very small space, you can even put your urban gardening. Nasturtiums, you can eat them. This is good life, huh? We should take back the power to design how we want to live, 
this should be something that uh, people should decide and not the government. What we do is define access in a completely new way. You know, normally on a museum site, there's a kind of like boss, someone who decides, you know, you can come in, you don't, you don't have the right to come in, you, you're not, you don't have the right to make exhibition here and so on. This is how museums work, right? On this site here on the campus, and everyone can move in. We just have one rule. Each tiny house needs a bed for a person in need. And upstairs, of course, the loft area. So enough space for two people. On the other side, the other loft, you can also place a mattress. And if you really have like people coming over, you can also sleep on this bench, like putting your feet underneath the stairs, totally enough. I think innovation comes up if you tie two different branches together. The idea of the Bauhaus back then, 100 years ago, they tried to create new housing forms, cheap housing, democratic housing. And if you put that together, micro apartment housing with tiny houses on wheels, then a project like this can come up. This is the 100 euro apartment. This apartment is really small, it's just six dot four square meters big. And that's the smallest apartment in Germany. It's just two meters from this wall to this wall, but two meters is enough to have a bed inside, right? So this could be like a sleeping area for guests. And um, the special thing about this uh, tiny house is that you know, the windows and the doors, they are shaped like in Baroque, Rococo times. We have these high ceiling windows. It's, it's, it's trying to be sort of more traditional? Yes. You know, the idea is to create apartments that you can put like on five floors or four floors. And if you look at the windows, it would look like a very ordinary house. But once you go in, you will see that it's pretty small. And theoretically speaking, if this apartment would exist in the real estate uh, world, then you would just pay like $100 a month. So this is the table where you can sit and have a chat and uh, work. This is the kitchen and uh, there's a loft space. I can show you one detail which is pretty neat. We try to use every space that we can get and this uh, floor here is actually a table. We call it Tetris table. So, you can lift this up, like this. I got it. It doesn't look very sexy why you built this up, but it works, you see? Now this is a kind of like table, and we call it Tetris table because it fits perfectly in this uh, this area and you see here here's a hole so you can put your legs I show you now <laughs> well, so you see I can put my feet here and have a table and still there's uh, enough space to sleep here so this space upstairs can serve as an office and we have enough you know headroom here so you don't feel like you know in in jail and you still have enough space to sleep here this is the master bedroom <laughs> and uh, if you want to have more space like for couples or for families then you can you know put this tetris table down so you're gonna go for king size and if you want to hide someone you want to help like you know you know refugees or so on there's a secret chamber here we call it well it's a little bit messed up right oh now my gosh, it's huge yeah it's uh we call it harry potter wall because harry potter you can go through walls and this is a harry potter wall where we can hide things there's this a is bed your place. yeah there's a bed but it's not it's interesting well no. it's uh there's a refugee from afghanistan who uh who lives here currently uh -huh. yeah and he uh he hides himself here in this uh, <laughs> so literally is wow yeah that's crazy as I said, you know, every tiny house needs to offer one um, bed for a person in need. And that's uh, why we have these things here. And uh, it's small, but we uh, have enough space for a bathroom. 
This bathroom cabin is inspired by the trains that we have in Germany. Whenever I am in a plane or a train, I always go inside with, you know, with camera and with my sketchbook and I try to figure out how they manage space. There's a compost toilet here and there's a shower there. And there's the, you know, the hole for the water to go through. You see, this is a mirror here. It makes the window, which is just half a window, look double. Is there another door? And this is actually the closet. And behind the closet is Anne Frank. This is inspired by Anne Frank. You know Anne Frank, she, she had her world behind the closet. You can go inside and have um, you know, a guest room. And um, at the moment, it's, we kind of go in because it's so oh, packed it's with things. Oh, ah, it's storage. storage, yeah. okay. So there's two closets, there's two hideaways. Yes, there are two hideaways. You know, I'm a, uh, I came as a refugee to Germany and uh, maybe this is kind of like inspired by my biography, you know, we were always on a move, my, my parents and I. Just find, find, a, find a home. Yes, the question for us as, uh, as, as displaced persons is always, you know, who deserves the, the good life? I don't get it that why should people with the right passport should have a good life and the ones with the wrong passport should live in, you know, suffer. This is what I don't accept, accept anymore. I think everyone deserves a good life you know every people independent from where your parents are what color skin you you have and uh, what religion everyone should have the right to to live in in the city and a good life and in community with nice people and do you think that's possible because that's the idea of this is to try to create something well to scale right it's it's not that easy because you know hundred years ago, the Bauhaus tried and the communists, they tried, Karl Marx tried, so many people tried and they failed. I think the, 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 big, the big global challenges and questions can only be solved if you start with your own behavior. It starts small, it starts tiny with the things that you can do with your hands, like a kitchen. And this is Mike over there, he used to live in a park two months ago. And now he's building tiny houses. And this is Apojan. He has no papers. He's an uh, artist and acting coach. He's building tiny houses now. It's about education, but we also help people in need, like Mike and Bushai. They're currently living in that tiny house, and they they're building that tiny house. They're constructing this. We're developing a new system. We call it furniture. It's a mix between furniture and architecture. That means we try to develop bathroom cabins. Everything is on wheels. Uh, we try to develop uh, kitchen cabins or kitchen desks. Everything is on wheels, so we can, you know, put it on that wall or on that wall, put it out of the tiny house and put it in an ordinary home or an ordinary office. And this will be the very first uh, model of that um, furniture series. It's a kitchen. Here there will be wheels, here and here and here and here and then uh, you can cook with that thing and uh, you can add some heating systems like this gas heating but you could also put an oven an ordinary you know wood stuff here furniture and it should be like adaptable to every tiny house that's why it's very narrow 50 centimeters so it can go through doors and uh, go outside of tiny houses and inside tiny houses and we, we plan the same thing with, with bathrooms. Bathroom okay. and sleeping lofts and uh, libraries, movable spaces. You know, I like uh, playing with symbols. And it's a very strong shape that the Bauhaus archive has. I mean, everyone, everybody in Berlin knows this building because it's designed by the world famous Walter Gropius. It's a so-called shed roof. The idea is, just imagine what would happen if we could cut the shed. That's the idea behind this tiny house project. It's called the One Square Meter Bauhaus Archive. There are volunteers building it. I mean, every tiny house is built by volunteers. At daytime, you know, it serves as a chair. You can sit here, you know, and hang out or um, work. It even has a, a cave here, a cellar, where you can put stuff. We stored the battery here, so we, uh, we have electricity. We're planning to build like three or four or five of these uh, structures. 
you know, having one tiny house and stick it to the next one and stick it to the next one like this. Because of the special shape of the roof, you will always have sunlight inside of the, the tiny house. It will never be dark. And that's the idea of that shed, light system. Apo, can I just make... Schieb doch das und das. Fanbo, schieb das und das. Das hat kein Fenster. Olli, alles gut. One rule here at the Bauhaus campus is that each tiny house, even if it's not designed for living, it should offer a sleeping place for one person in need. Performance. Kurdish Chinese yes. circus. Drive. <laughs> and you see this frame here is like a plug. And here you see on that side is like a hole. So you can stick this tiny house into another tiny house. You have to imagine, you know, this it's designed in a way that you can put this off, the glass too. So there's a long space where you can sleep. Then you have a long space to put a mattress in and then you can sleep inside of it. So even in, in the smallest tiny house, you can sleep and offer a space for a person in need. Of course, you cannot stay over the winter in this kind of tiny house. This is too small and too, you know, the, the walls too thin. But what we like is to provoke and to foster new ideas and to ask people if it's possible, you know, to give a building another meaning in the night, like a museum at daytime, it's in use, right? But like 60% of the daytime, it's empty. You know, it closed at five. From five to the next day, 10 in the morning, it's empty. There's a lot of space that can be used, but it's empty. And the question is, how, how can we do that? This is, this is a cafe, actually. It's the Café Grundeinkommen, which deals with uh, economic uh, questions. And this is Ed, a programmer and uh, blockchain activist and uh, basic income activist. Want to say hi? hi? Hey, how's it going? That's great. Is this your house? <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's a bed? Yes. There's nowhere to sleep? There is. This is designed as a cafe, so there isn't, it isn't really a full living space as such. But of course, we've had people in need sleeping here. If they need a place to stay, we're happy to provide it. So this is a very tiny space, like, you know, nine to 10 square meters. Every tiny house is like not bigger in general than 10 square meters. That's the space of a parking lot actually. Because there's a law in Germany or let's say in Berlin, if you build a structure which is smaller than 10 square meters, you don't need any permission because it's not declared as an architectural thing. It's more like a, like a closet. So your idea is that this was legal because it's too small? Right. So we don't need any permission for things that is declared as a shed or as a closet. I mean, if, if you want to transport a piano, you don't need any permission, right? So that's actually as the same thing as a piano. piano. But to live in it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's forbidden in Germany to live in tiny houses. Actually, thinking about uh, basic income actually is partly forbidden. It's, it's in a great legal gray area because we're creating a currency called circles. That is a private currency. But because we're not profiting from it, because there's no money involved, it's just purely really a sharing network. And the really radical part of this idea is that we do it without the state. A bit like Bitcoin, but it's free. You get a certain amount per month and you can spend that on whatever you like. And so when we're creating a currency, we also need a place to be able to use that currency. So we need a cafe or some kind of business where we can transact in that currency. You see, I think innovation comes up if you tie two different branches together, like, you know, uh, the idea of tiny houses and the idea of basic income. If you put this together, then something, you know, something new can happen. In 2015, we, we saw this massive flux of refugees towards Europe, especially Austria and Germany, 800,000 up to a million. And Private citizens, uh, private companies, they went into the void, they went into the need and they created a lot of different housing projects and retreat. Free space concept is one of them. So it's a company by three young Germans. One is a junior chef of a freight forwarding company. So he's very familiar with this global system of interchangeable boxes. So that's a crane free logistic the freight forwarding system, it's older than the ISO shipping containers. You don't need a crane or a, a forklift or something like this. 
you just need the truck and the truck can can move up and down by itself already so all the stuff like electricity and fresh water like good would go in the hose would go in here you have up to one meter and ten centimeter space between the ground and the, the structure because the truck goes underneath lifts itself up the driver without any crane without any mechanical help the truck goes up the hydraulic system raises the truck until you you connect with the four interlocks then you can screw the from hand so it, it's very easy then you lift the truck a little bit more so you fold down the four legs you lower the truck to a driving condition and the house is secured on the truck and one truck driver can load and unload any interchangeable box since it's using the global system it's wide as a truck in germany is allowed to be so it's using the complete the road size so it's really quite big I mean, it's, quite it's 18 square meters yeah. and the retreat double would be the double in the size because you would put another box in a 90 degree angle, of course, then you would remove much of the wall and then it would be 36 square meters and you can still separate these two boxes in the retreat double version and move them with two trucks. Have a kitchen, a yeah. kitchen. This is from Ikea, so it's really basic stuff. Um, we have, right now we don't have handles because people are always opening my fridge, very, <laughs> very tidy. We have a regular sink water hose yeah and and the regular bathroom for and the, the benefit of this is just that they're very mobile affordably mobile yes and the benefit is in contrast to the iso shipping containers they are much bigger inside mm. and much better isolated and they are constructed for living this building was really built as a permanent apartment and it was supposed to be like eight or nine buildings supposed to be in like a circle like in the Wild West, you had these wagons. That was the idea, to have a village space in the middle. Dude. This was the initial idea. This is where it all started from. That's why they call it resettlement. It was like to rethink. This is the idea if you need to stack them because they are not stackable, you need to construct a steel construction. And that's why they were not so successful in selling this idea to the German authorities, which needed very fast, very cheap housing. And right now, all the refugees have now moved to regular apartments. Now, the discussion about should we change the law for temporary houses or for modular houses, it's frozen again. Maybe we can, with this tiny house university project, we can still keep at least a small flame on this discussion going. That's the bathroom. So this is the shower system. It's called the shower loop. It was created by an inventor from Helsinki. He had the idea to have this infinite shower. So you only use 10 liters of water for it. You pump it inside the system. You filtrate it in the first filter. You purify it with active filter. And then you sterilize it with a UV light. So it comes out clean on top, goes in the train, and will pump up and cleaned again. So you only need to heat it once or a few times after. So it, the water is being recycled? The water, the same water is being recycled instantly. So the shower at itself is missing, but the system is already okay. inside. And all of this stuff is open source. So you can get the materials and build it yourself for wow. about 800, 800 nice. bucks. What we have here is like a compost toilet. Mm -hmm. It's the simplest form of a, a tri-separation toilet. So basically you have the bucket mm -hmm. and you have a bottle. So it's the simplest way, but it's very nice because what we do here is we close the, the food cycle. And instead of putting like wood fiber on, we have a charcoal we put on top and uh, we create terra preta. It's like a very rich, nutritious soil you can create out of your feces. And with the urine, we mix it with water in one to ten mixture and then you can easily use it as a fertilizer for your plants. So when you, one person uh, eats a whole year food, yeah. he puts out his feces and you need two euro pellets to transform it into compost. So we have exactly the space around our house. So you see, this is the one square meter house. It's just uh, one square meter. 
I've designed it to end homelessness. I've designed it with a homeless guy and he was very excited about building this with me. This is personal architecture, right? Like it's just for one. Well, it, it, it doesn't fit a family. Actually, there were already two people here because one people can sit there and then you have a chat or put a board here so you can play chess. But you need to know these, this other person, <laughs> I think, I guess. It's very small, but actually, when, once you, you're inside, you will experience a kind of like privacy. The sound is different. It sounds a little bit like in a, in a tone studio. And you have this big window here, so you still feel like, you know, connected to the outside. There's a door missing. This uh, building has two faces. That's the face of it at nighttime. And at daytime, it looks like this. And it's supposed to be on wheels. The wheels are still missing. I have to take my shoes off here. That's the house policy. No shoes inside of the house. You need to, you know, prepare yourself mentally before you enter this tiny house. So put shoes here and my jacket. That's the wardrobe. <laughs> and well, actually this is an office. You know, you can hang out here and having your computer here, closing the door. So what's, what's your definition of house? Do you have one? Well, the definition of house, it should always be a symbiosis with neighborhood. If you have a big castle on an island, of course you, you can call it a house, but what's the difference between a Guantanamo accommodation and a big castle on an island if you don't have any connection to your surroundings and to your neighbors? That oh, smells good. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just sit upstairs. Exactly. A house, in my opinion, should always deal with the needs and dreams and the individual wishes of your neighbors. And we should always, with our own house, provide as much peace as we can with the others. Sorry guys, you want a tea, huh? <laughs> oh, no. I keep on talking here. It's a beautiful tea. Oh. Gentlemen. This is a little community, as small as it can get, I would say. <laughs> and this actually made us learn that it's a different structure. If you build it for yourself or for everyone, even a hotel is a, is a community because it has many people coming and living in it. So, so we learned that the place is the people. Of course, silos are, well, as you see for me, they are magic, the potential of them. But I would actually separate the place and the object because you have a tiny living unit. Is it a caravan? Is it an RV? Is it a camper van? Is it a tiny house? Is it a silo? That's not the question. The question is you have a mobile unit in which you can live in and you bring it to a place. Now we have the place and what it does to you. Take one. Sure. And we have you inside of your object. Mmm. Here. It's comfy, it's cool, eh? I mean, you can really, you can sing a song. You know, my daughter always sits up here and tells stories to the people. Lots of people coming in. Do we want that? Or we close the door and stay inside and pretend no one notices us. <laughs> you affect the environment and the environment has an effect on you. And how that correlation becomes symbiotic in the best case. It become so many ways, but it's a relationship. You start, you come, so you change the place. When we land on Mars, we change the planet, you know, I'm sorry. It's not the same Mars anymore. Even in really classic novels about the colonization of Mars, you have two groups and there's a revolution happening. You know why? There's the people who want to leave it as it is, to respect the planet, although they're already there, but they're aware of this question. And you have the other side who just wants to take all resources because we are humans and we need to survive and it's just not important what it does to the planet. And that is the question. I come with my trailer here, I have an impact. Maybe step on that. You can step on it, it's cool. I am, look, I can jump on it. Huh?
Ah, I went. Really to... This jelly one makes you step on the glass. It's like falling down. Yeah, do it, do it carefully, however you want. And every neighborhood and every human being is different. So, for me as an architect, it's a total ideology to say that there should be like one type of house fitting to each human being on Earth. I mean, why should we, why should we design like apartments uh, with two bedrooms and two bathrooms? There, there aren't just families on Earth who need uh, bathrooms to be happy. You need so little. <laughs> A bit of mint. Mm. Fresh lemon. But that's how, you know, exposés and uh, the concepts are uh, made uh, if, if you design a house as an architect. <laughs>